welcome to the Beer Odyssey. We're here today at the Cast Republic, one of the premier craft beer bars in Connecticut. Right now it's Alpine Pale Ale. I'm really surprised that they had this since it's a small California brewery, you know, um, the guy was a firefighter prior to starting it full time. And then they, I guess they get it over here and I'm really happy to have it on draft. It tastes really good, you know, a little bitter, it's good for Pale Ale. I'm really looking for a duet and happy birthday and maybe some Nelson someday. Well, anyway, Cash Republic, New Haven, Connecticut, one of the best craft beer bars in the state. And cheers. Hey, I'm here with Norman. And we're here at the Cash Republic in New Haven, Connecticut, one of the top premier craft beer bars in Connecticut. And I'm very excited to be here. We've got Willie here. I know he's always drinking. Not drinking right now. Um, <laughs> I have another 10 there, another 10 there, and another 10 in the front, making for 23 drop lines total. Um, we, have, we have a hand pump cask ale. Uh, we always, always, always have a head cask condition ale um, on the hand pump at all times here. Which is uh, one of the main things that I ever really strive for. Beer spirits. Uh, I got the Bear, Bear Republic whiskey. I got Sharpay R5. Real Dead Bond whiskeys. Uh, some stuff from Ballast Point. What's, so, the, what's that expensive bourbon? Uh, Happy Van Winkle? Yep, I got a bottle of Happy Van Winkle. Oh, right there. wow. Uh, I think it's the, uh, the 12 year on top there. Nice. Right, right next to the uh, Sharpay. How much is that glass? Pretty That retails about $40 a glass. Oh, wow. Yeah, we don't even, that, that's off the menu too. So that's kind of um, the type of thing that's in the up there. Like, oh, you have Happy Special Occasions. I want to have a glass. Oh wow, it's like yeah. it's like utopia almost, you know? It is like utopia. I have the um, I got the lay balance I use up there. I don't know if you guys have ever had those before. Yeah. Um, it's similar to utopia, it's not as strong as uh, an alcohol content. They're um, they're pretty biscuit barley wine to out of Italy. Um, same idea that you can have them, you know, let them go. Well. They're about 50 60 percent um, again by the other brewery lay balance. You're very nice. The, the, uh, all, all these kind of you know high top bar you know, tables. Uh, and these are cool when the place gets really busy. You know, grab a drink, come sit over here, uh, meet new people, stuff like that. All dinner service along the wall. Um, you can see each group has kind of old vintage New Haven slash Yale photos, uh, some little storefronts. Uh, that there's a true picture from uh, I believe that yeah. is um, yeah. a great avenue. Uh, yeah. Yeah, burgers, steaks, uh, tons of seafood. We actually do a, we do a rotating seasonal menu. Um, and actually, we rotate our menu pretty much every single Friday. Um, every single Friday, you can expect four or five new items on the menu. So, yeah, the chef's pretty good back there. And here is kind of one of the um, one of two show pieces in the restaurant. Um, so where we store 43 of 53 of the the other drops that I showed you before. Um, and you see, uh, so that's pretty much all the import section there. Yeah, I see and then, that. Uh, moving on over here, this is uh, kind of half import, half American, and then mainly the all Americans there. A couple imports here and there. I try, I try to keep it as organized best as I can. Um, I try to rotate the bottles too, though, so sometimes we go over spots and vice versa. Love it. A lot of the bottles I keep. I, I try to get beers that you can't necessarily get on draft, um, like the um, Crooked State beers there, the uh, Nebraska. You know, this kind of high-end beers there, um, Walsh, the Omissions. So it's kind of a lot of beers that you can't always get on draft. Yeah, and then some staples that I think should always be around, like the Sierra Nevada of beers. So. You know what that, I'm looking at that. You know what that reminds me of real quick? Prairie Artisan Ale, uh, Prairie Brown. Yeah, yep, exactly. I want to say the same style. So, um, a lot of work trying to keep this thing nice and neat, almost kind of, almost kind of like a storefront, you know Yeah, I mean? it looks really good. Yeah, you go, you go to a lot of bars, I'm sure they're, uh, <laughs> they're their beer sellers, you just kind of, you know, stuff everywhere. So let's we'll take a look inside, actually. Oh, right, that's great. Ooh! Um, Love it. So yes, we are inside of our walk This is, again, where uh, 43 of 53 of the draft lines are. I have another walk cooler in the back where we have some time. It's in the kitchen, it's not as pretty as this one. This one's really pretty. Um, you see every single individual keg has its own regulator to adjust the CO2 pressure. Oh yeah. Um, a lot of the beers I deal with, you know, some of the European imports, um, 
just kind of sense a lot of beers just they're, they need to get different pressures well, they're all very sensitive um, so I have what you call long draw lines as the beer goes up there it's about, about three pints to the actual faucet um, so once you get up through the ceiling there we have a we have a fly pole system um, fly pole I don't know if you guys are familiar it's basically like the antifreeze um, so what the oh, fly wow. pole system does is it pumps cold liquid around these individual lines to the faucet so when you go over the faucet there it's basically as cold as it is in here I think it should be at about should be at about 30, 37 degrees right now or my thermometer is but that's about 30 or so so um, how, how do you know when the keg is kicked? How do we know when the keg is kicked? Um, so every night before we start our shift, I'll come in here and I'll look. We can see through these lines here. And I'll see if we can find them right now, actually. Now, yeah, actually I bet the outline's almost kicked. The outline's probably almost kicked. <laughs> um, so so we'll, we'll, try, we'll try to look in there, and if you can see that there's no beer in that um, in the beer line there, you can assume that you only got about two pints left in the line. Nice. Um, I always try to have backup beers. Um, a couple kegs over there, some over there. You don't want to keep too much though. A lot of beers I like to, especially a lot, a lot of the IPAs nowadays, you want to make sure you're keeping them fresh. You know? Uh, nice. uh, these, these lines over here, these are special. These are regulated at 52 degrees as opposed to the rest of them that are at 32. These ones here we use for um, a, lot of, a lot of beer stouts, a lot of barley wines, um, Belgian style beers. Right now I have Grimbergen. I've got uh, North Coast Old Stock. I've got uh, Heavy Seas Phantom, which is a Burn Barrel Age Triple. We've got uh, Harvested Old Double. That's a, uh, a uh, basically an old ale out of Scotland. That's an ancient 21 year old Highland, Highland Clark casks. And then um, down here, you got a uh, collaboration with uh, with Hofted and Stillwater. Um, it's a uh, Belgian Stout. It's actually the last beer that was brewed at the Hofted Brewery before it burned down in January. Oh, um, so it's kind of cool to have a beer. Not cool that the brewery burned down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you guys take beer seriously here. I mean, you're not messing around. You got yeah. the right temperatures. Yeah. You store it right. You're like, it's like, you know, you're babying it, which you have to do. They are my babies. Especially. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so these blue lines here, you'll notice I have two blue lines here and two blue lines on the other side of this walking cooler. So most beer is pushed with a mix of 75% CO2, 25% nitrogen. The blue lines are the reverse mix. Those ones are 75% nitrogen, 25% CO2. And that is basically, um, you guys are familiar with a Guinness style beer. You're gonna get that real kind of creamy, real dense style beer. So that's what we're doing there. Um, right now I have an IPA on there by Berkshire. I have the Alpine Stout on there. Um, over there we do have a Guinness, and then I got one other one. I can't remember what exactly it was. Um, double check and see. Long Trout Limbo, uh, New England 668. Oh, Road to Ruin. Road to Ruin there. Um, we've been getting really lucky with that. We need to bring Sea Hag. Once a week, we were getting a keg that was keg yesterday. So they picked wow. up the beer on Wednesday, they delivered the keg on Thursday. Usually we're taking the kegs on Wednesday. So it's, it's constantly nice. fresh Sea Hag. Yeah, nice. It's pretty cool. Look at that beer today. Um, that there is our, uh, I was talking about the casks before. We always like to make sure we have a cast. Uh, I have a pretty cool cast program where it's just out of So like I said, that there, that's, uh, that's kind of one of the main show pieces. Um, I'll bring you guys up to my agent. Oh, nice. Yeah. So again, up here you got a real kind of cool, casual lounge type area. Um, I like to this glass of scotch if I'm quite honest. Maybe that's bottle wine or something. Uh, that's a cool conversation scotch. area. I love oh, scotch. Nice. Oh, you got a lot. Oh, check this out. Right over here, so this barrel right here, um, whenever, we, whenever we do uh, beer and stuff like that, or events, we'll have um, you know, kind of some cool brewers in. So we had uh, Sam Calione on there when we first opened up Castro Oh, Public. yeah, Dark um, I got um, Jerome from, B from BFM out in Switzerland. I have Mr. Cayucci from the Itachino Brewery. And then uh, Brian Strunke from uh, from Stillwater. Um, so yeah, whatever you know. To me, those are celebrities. Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this room is regulated at 52 degrees. Um, very important with the um, with the beer. So we'll kind of cruise right in here. Uh, I got some pretty cool stuff. You got your KBSs, um, Bourbon Counties. Um, oh, wow. These beers here, these are more or less. These are a lot of imperial stouts. Uh, that's a barley wine. I think these ones are stouts. These are barley wines. Um, these are sour beers. 
Um, if you look right here, I have, I think right now, I'm from 2008 going all the way up to 2014. This year for the 2015, we're going to do an eight year vertical with the, uh, with the Anchor Christmas beers and see if those are still any good. They might be, they might not be. I don't know, eight years in the mix. Um, so some things that we try to do, I try to buy, um, say, say there's a beer that's released once a year, like the, uh, the Brooklyn Black Ops, I'll try, you know, try to get every, every single year. So you got 2014, 13, 2012, dating back to 2011. Um, I got, uh, when, when Great Divide pulled out of Connecticut, we bought up all of the stock of Yeti, so I got bottles there. But yeah, so uh, I, have a, I have a pretty big sour event planned, so I'm, I'm doing 20 sour beers coming come May 5th, so right now there's, there's eight of them here, there's a couple extra ones back there. Um, but typically when, when, I, when I look into aging beers, you know, I do Imperial Stouts, I do Barley Wines. Um, over there you'll have kind of a lot of Belgian style beers. Um, a lot of the kegs in here are one-off beers, maybe beers that are released once a year. So what I'll do is I'll try to buy two kegs if, if I can get them both. Tap one right away, tap one in a couple of months when we're bored or, you know, <laughs> if, if, the, uh, if, if the inventories aren't looking too cool, I'll be like, oh, you know what, I got some cool beers. So Pop this, yeah. this, yeah. my question, when is yes. this going to be tapped? So that, that there is... Actually, I, I kind of secretly tapped a keg of that wow. uh, about a week and a half ago. I was able to get two of them, oh. so I, I didn't 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 publicize it at all. You know, just kind of put it on draft. We we have we had it on the wall for a couple of days. Nobody really knew about it. And that one there, we're probably going to um, save for December when it's snowing, because they're they're really awesome. this time of the year. I feel like a beer like that should be drank when it's snowing. I agree. Um, and I, I have this kind of cool thing. Whenever they're, they're, New Haven's got a really cool local beer scene, a really cool local community that likes to come out in the snowstorms. So whenever it snows, you'll find that I'll, I'll tap Bourbon Cantonese, I'll tap KBS, wow. uh, real stout troopers, beers that I've been aging for like five years, and um, be like, come on guys, make the trek out here. You know, let's let's get snowed in. It's that's the place up. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's kind of it. There's really not too much big show. Um, the rest of the restaurants are not that great. Um, you have your um, kind of storage room. Um, Ridiculous amount of extra tap handles, empty pegs, ice machine. That's uh, that's one of the black hole units there. That's actually the one that mandates add um, at the 52 degrees. Then I have three others in the back that are you can't see them. They're all the way there in another back room. That's the uh, that's the AC unit for the, uh, the vintage room there. Um, so you can, yeah, you can tell a lot of restaurants kind of have its own private little uh, little motors, if you will. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's enough. I mean, just see, I never see, you know, a craft beer bar have everything you guys have. Self aging room, you know, a really squared away cooler, you yeah. know, your baby mm -hmm. in the beer. <laughs> it's really, it's really, you know. A lot of good storage. Yeah, a lot of good storage. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Really I, mean, I would definitely yeah. say that it's a lot more than a bar, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. you, go, you, you go to a bar, you're expecting, you know, they're going to have this, they'll have some, maybe some burgers and stuff, yeah. you guys are taking the culinary part of it, yeah. and making a big deal out of it, so it's like, you don't have to love craft beer to come here, which no, not that's at all. awesome. Not but, at all. We actually have a, uh, we have a really cool cocktail program here, too, where we do a lot, a lot of house infusions. Um, I, I kind of take care of the beer, um, I kind of manage it, really kind of Ali, she takes care of our kind of liquor and cocktails, and we have a, um, we have a guy who works for our company named Tim that kind of comes in with a lot of liquor training, a lot, a lot of hands-on beer training with our staff and everything like that, so, yeah. What's the, like, your best sell? When, when you put a certain beer on tap, it's like the door, is the crowd overflowing out the door? Like, yep. you made me duck, so I can think of off my head? Yep. Um, it, 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 it really all depends on how you pipe the beer. Um, you know, we were talking about the KBS in there. Yes. You can put, you know, you put on Facebook, you can put on Twitter, Instagram, and you're tapping this at that time, tapping this, tapping this. You do that for two, three days straight, come five o'clock, you better believe you can have the entire bar packed because everyone knows about it. And the cut will be gone in you know, a matter of 20 minutes. Um, or, you know, there's nobody at the bar right now, we can tap a keg like that, not tell anybody, and we'll let it go for about two or three days. Oh, go ahead, guys. Oh, so sorry. Um, but yeah, beers like the uh, the Pleasant Baby Ducks, even Yanni Bot can see the uh, the lost of the sip of sunshine. Yeah. yeah. The tap those beers. Um you're looking at maybe an hour, two hours, something like that. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Sometimes quicker. That's crazy. Yeah. And then even, even when I try to I try not to tell anybody, I try to do my secret tappings, people will see on tap. You know, they'll, they'll be at their house, they'll be at an area bar. I'm like, oh hey, you know, uh yeah. Gary's checking into a sip of sunshine at Cast Republic. And all of a sudden yep. okay. hey, I'm here with uh Gretchen. Okay, and how long have you been here for Cash Public? Two years. Do you like working here? I 
Yeah. Now, how, now, what has this done for you? I mean, has this brought your uh, mind of craft beer? Are you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Two years ago, I couldn't, couldn't have walked into the back of the store and picked out a beer that I that I knew what it was all about. Yeah. I would just pick it up because the label was cool. <laughs> now I can actually like nice. tell yeah. you exactly what the beer is going to taste like and. What was your first beer? Do you remember having your first craft beer that really set you over and said, "Oh, I'm on, I'm on the kick now." Dogfish Head, Miles Davis, bitches. Wow, really? Yeah, I knew, I knew right off the bat that I didn't like hops. No. Um, I went out to San Diego recently though, so mm -hmm. you know that's that? really broadened my horizons. Oh, um, nice. I visited Stone, Coronado, and uh, Ballast Point while I was out there, and I came home and uh, we had. Uh, Ballast Point grapefruit sculpting on. Yeah. So I was like, okay, all right. Welcome, no. nice welcome home. Yeah. So what's your favorite beer here? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Um, right now, I really like the Siren and Stillwater Goza. Okay. Um, it's so brewed with hibiscus flowers um, and a black vol Hawaiian volcano song. Mm. It's a black Goza. It's the, the coolest. Like, it's the coolest blue clothes I've ever had. So that's my favorite right now. The cool, you know those little flowers that they give you, like, on your dinner plate? That's what the it tastes like. Like, that's oh, what nice. the, the finish tastes like. Oh, nice. So you don't like really IPAs, though? I'm getting into it. Um, I really, I that's what makes me different, like, from, from liking IPAs. I like 90 minute. You ask anybody else that likes hops, they'll say 60 minute. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I like barley wine, so. Uh, yeah. Or 120. 120 or I, burned my chest. I, I like 120. You do? I like really high ABV beers. I like that that intense alcohol, yeah. that like kick in the mouth, like so, high yeah. stouts and, and high ABV beers. Nice. Well, yep. well, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. We're talking about what it is to me. This is the old standby, can't go wrong with some sea hag. The younger sister to, of course, Gandhi Bot. Wish it was you. I'll miss you. And I'm always drinking. I'm gonna say goodbye. What are we drinking today? I'm drinking some Down East Hard Cider. It's about 5.1%. It's from Maine and I love it. It has like a nice golden, I guess, uh, color to it. The apple cider. It's actually very, it's a nice mild beer. It's a good break from the Angry Orchard. So I'm okay. enjoying it. What was the other What was the other cider that you tried today? I know you had a sample of something else. Oh, it was the Mackenzie. And why'd you make Why'd you make that face? What was What was What didn't you like about it? It was a little too cinnamony. It was a little too spicy. A little yeah. Too hot to my mouth. Okay. You know, if I want to drink something hot, I'll go with Fireball whiskey. This okay. is nice and mild, great taste, light. I love it. So cheers. Ask Republics, New Haven, Connecticut. A really good craft beer bar and restaurant. Sit back, relax, you know, enjoy yourself. I really like this place. I'll be back. I'm Gary. For Willie and for Rob, this is the Beer Odyssey. And cheers. So what are you drinking? So we had a great time, you know, great brew, great people. Uh, Norm knew his stuff. We had a great oh, time definitely, there. Definitely. Uh, Norm really seemed to have a, a love for craft beer, and he wasn't just spouting off nonsense. Uh, Norm definitely knew his stuff, and he was uh, a fan of the brew, like much like we are. So uh, this is the Beer Odyssey. That's Robbie. That's Gary. Cheers. This is Holly. Cheers. What are you drinking? I'm not drinking yet because we're in a car. But what are you drinking? <laughs>